How's it going everybody? Taktar Ted Ukraine update for the 10th of August. All right guys. So yesterday, if you remember, I talked about a uh, supposed missile strike on uh, an airport in uh, Crimea. It turns out that it was an air base. Um, Definitely an attack. Uh, there is estimated that 20 combat aircraft were lost. The Ukrainians knocked out. And the Ukrainians are also claiming that they took out or injured, incapacitated roughly 60 Russian pilots. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's a nothing because that is a something. And if there are 20 less aircraft and 60 less pilots, and you think about this, an aircraft is not any good without an air uh, pilot to fly it, then uh, there's gonna be a huge dent in the air superiority that, or air supremacy that uh, <laughs> Russia currently enjoys. So uh, we'll see in the next few weeks whether, uh, whether it makes a difference uh, with the TAC air capabilities in uh, Ukraine, whether the Russians simply aren't going to have the um, the ability to um, maintain dominance in the air. Also, we hear that in Kherson, uh, that after weeks of trying, they finally temporarily damaged of a railroad bridge at a dam which means that they won't be able to use trains to bring in supplies, but <laughs> rail, uh, rail may not, the one rail bridge may, but uh, not only is the one tra uh, vehicle traffic bridge still up, but apparently the Russians have laid several pontoon bridges that seem to be immune to attack. So it doesn't look like the supply shortages um, are going to happen. And not that I'm making excuses, I just call as I see it and call what it is. Um, as far as the rest of Donbass, everything keeps grinding forward. It's taking the Russians too long. No, it's not taking the Russians too long. The Russians, their casualties are declining. They got real heavy casualties the first couple weeks of the war. And it's trickled down. Why? Because they started using artillery as their main arm. They didn't try to batter everything with infantry. They decided to set back, do the tried and true, using the artillery as their heavy lifting, and they simply set back. They find a fortified position that they want to take. They work it with artillery. They work it with airstrikes. And then, when they feel it's adequately degraded, they send in infantry to mop up. And that's nothing new in warfare. That's nothing unheard of. That seems to be a fairly uh, common practice. And it shows they're making uh, progress on Bakhmut. They're making uh, uh, progress on softening up the area around Edvitka. And uh, they're pushing forward. Um, I know that uh, the Ukrainians are having a lot of... Uh, problems anymore with what's going on. They, they can't seem to keep control of their troops, mass desertions and everything else, but you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to see a change here in the next few weeks. I know that, uh, the Russians, the Russians push is built around a two or three week period. Uh, they put in troops, troops go for two to three weeks and then they have a rotation. They rotate their troops out, they bring them to the rear, they allow them to uh, get rest and refitted. Um, and that cycle is coming to a change right here. So that's just one of the many things to think about is, is how, this, uh, how these changes and how all this is affecting everything. So, Basically, it, everything's grinding on. Eventually, everything will come to an end. But for right now, the Russians are still grinding forward. The Ukrainians still have re not retaken any population center, or at least major population center. 
that they have lost in the course of this war. And uh, they don't appear to be on the cusp of doing so. Uh, this great Hurson offensive that everybody kept talking about doesn't seem to be happening. And that's where we're at. I know it's a short update, but there's really not a terrible lot going on, guys. So I'll talk at you later. Bye.